Someone tried to scam me. Yes, someone tried to scam me with a sponsorship, and I just want to talk about it because I actually found it extremely interesting. So this is how the email goes. Hello, Easy Peasy Finance. You're being contacted via Easy Peasy Finance for kids and beginners and a message. And this message is saying, oh, I'm an ambassador of a company. I want you to make a promotional video. Please see the video sample. Then it has this really long link. Now, one thing I always do whenever I receive some sort of sponsorship email is I look at the domain that it's sent from. In this case, it's info at easypeasyfinance.com. It looks pretty legitimate, so it passes one of my very primary precursors into determining a sponsorship. So what I decided to do is I looked into the website to see what product do they they provide because there's no point of me going super duper deep in a sponsorship if the product sucks. So I went to the website and the product does not suck ladies and gentlemen. It is a multi award winning financial literary resource for kids just like you guys. I think this is perfect. I mean, I watched their YouTube video. It definitely makes sense with my audience because you guys keep spending your damn money on Discord Nitro. Oh my goodness, it's a chat platform. Just learn alternatives, spend some time, save yourself some money, stop buying Fortnite skins. But anyways, it seems like a legitimate website. So this made me think, so did this website get hacked? Did little Rishi accidentally decide to give uh, poor financial advice and got hacked by some person who lost thousands and thousands of dollars on penny stocks? Uh, that's actually not the case. I was looking around and it turns out there's a contact us form. So this got me thinking, can I use this contact us form to send any email some random message? So I tried it. My name is Dees and you might want to ask what my last name is, but you can figure that out yourself. And I'm going to send it to uh, your email, no text to speech at gmail.com. And my message is you suck. Your videos suck. I unsubscribed or something along those lines. You know, I usually get a lot of messages like that. They're my favorite. Then I'm gonna click I'm not a robot and click submit. Now you might be thinking, am I telling Rishi that his videos suck and that I unsubscribed? No, in fact, what I'm doing is that if I refresh my email, you might notice that uh, I just got another email. Now ignore this uh, one deleted message in this conversation. I messed up recording this video before, but you'll notice it's the same email. And the message is, you suck, your videos suck, I unsubscribed. You might be thinking, hold on, this kind of matches the format of the first email I got from the scammer. So I decided this is how they're trying to attack me, but I wanted to dive deeper into what the actual attack is. What are they trying to do? So what I did is I clicked on the link like an absolute idiot and kaboom, we got this website. Miss has promotion, which is spelt 100% perfectly correct. Nothing wrong here at all. Anyways, it says, oh, you need to view the promo video. You need a password for this archive and I need to download it from a mega.nz file. Now, what is this Telegraph website? Well, it's just a website where you can type whatever you want. In this case, I actually type something saying subscribe to no text to speech. You can literally just visit this URL and kaboom, you now have this page that I made. Yeah, fancy, right? Now you can see that you should totally subscribe to my channel. See, that was like a smooth plug, isn't it? I'm like great at this. Anyways, I decided to uh, go back to the, the mishaps promotion, downloaded the mega.nz file, and ran it. And uh, like, awesome, now I'm getting thousands of sponsorships. Just kidding. I downloaded this on a virtual machine. Now, one thing I want to note out is that you should not be running malware on a virtual machine unless you're running in Linux and you know exactly what you're doing, because there are malwares that can detect that they're in a virtual machine and break out of the virtual machine and hack your host computer. And that's why I suggest you use kind of like online analysis tools. So generally when I start off, I go to Virus Total because a Virus Total looks like Switzerland with a lot of red flags, then you know, I, I don't really have to do any more thinking. So I threw it in Virus Total and it just says, oh, one detection, it might be archive bomb. So it might be a zip bomb, but this could be a false positive and there's a lot of green check marks. That made me think, should I just open the file and see what's inside? Well, not on my own computer. I went to triage and I did that myself. I just inputted in the zip file and it came out with two files. There was two video promotions example, Miss Has collaboration, full HD, 1080, 720 view, dot mp4 dot scr now what is this mp4 dot scr well i kind of made a little bit of an example here but basically what can happen is that when you download this type of file and you don't have file extensions enabled people might think oh it's just cool video dot mp4 however if i go to view and click show and file name extensions you'll notice that it is dot mp4 dot scr now what is an scr file it's a windows screen saver extension file but it basically acts as an exe i can run whatever you want if you click on this SCR file, 
So anyways, uh, Triage did a fantastic example saying, you know what, this file is 10 out of 10 perfect. They passed the math test. They're going to kill it in college. No, I'm kidding. 10 out of 10 actually means that this file is extremely dangerous. Now, I could go through all the process and saying, oh, signatures, check computer location. But thankfully, Triage made my life easy by just saying, yo, dog. It's Redline. And what is Redline? So I went on Google and I found this. Redline Stealer is a malware available on underground forms for sale, apparently as standalone, $100 or $150 depending on the version, or also on a subscription basis, $100 a month. This malware harvests information from browsers such as safe credentials, autocomplete data, and credit card information. Blah, 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 steals cryptocurrency, blah, 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 download files, execute commands, and send back information. So anyways, hopefully I've made it extremely clear that this file, if I downloaded it, it would have stolen my YouTube account, it would have turned me into a, an Elon Musk cryptocurrency live streaming channel that's trying to scam people about this new crypto coin that's going to blow up and make bajillions of dollars. So that's what usually happens. That's why if you go on Twitter and look at Team YouTube, it's just filled with people crying about how their YouTube channels are hacked because people, you know, it might seem pretty obvious that, yo, an email like this is totally sketchy beyond belief, but some people are just either stupid, they're not native English speakers, so they can't really tell that this is a sketchy message. There's a lot of factors that do play into this that people do fall for. Another big factor is that I already said it's really bad, it's red line stealer. However, virus totals like, yo dog, it's just a zip bomb in the worst case scenario, this might just be a false positive. But in reality, what's happening is that the people who write this malware are extremely good at what they do and they hide the fact that it's malware from all these antiviruses. So that's why never just use a virus total as your one and done solution. If you are trying to analyze a sketchy file, you need to use multiple, multiple websites. And if you've run it through everything you can and you still can't tell it's a virus, just don't run the file. I mean, what are the risks of you not running the file? And just to make it clear, easypeasyfinance.com is not, you know, the bad malicious website. What's happening here is that people are just exploiting their contact us form to try and send out this malware. So it's kind of the fault of Easy Peasy Finance for not screening this stuff. But these malware hacker guys, they're creative. So if it's not easy peasy finance, maybe it's easy peasy lemon squeezy finance. Anyways, that's the story on how I definitely was nowhere close to being hacked. But, you know, I just wanted to point it out there anyways, because it's pretty interesting. I love you. Bye bye. Mwah.